Hello everyone. I'm wishing you a happy new year. What? It's October and it's new year? Yes, it's Jewish new year. Rosh Hashanah. Jewish year has two beginnings. A religious year begins the month that Passover's in. And the civil new year begins in September or October every year. A bit like our financial year and our calendar year, according to the Gregorian calendar that Pope Gregory the Great created for us centuries ago. So Jewish New Year begins when two witnesses in Jerusalem sight the first sliver of the new moon of the seventh month called Tishri and agree together that the, they have seen it and so the shofar or ram's horn of which this which this is a prime example but it isn't from a ram it's from a kosher gazelle it could also be a goat horn because goats are a kosher animal as well um, and that would be a much smaller horn and so the ram's horn is sounded and the fire or beacon is lit on every mount, high mountain across the land and further afield such as the diaspora of Egypt and Asia Minor or Turkey, the Near East. And that announces to everyone that the, new, that the Feast of Trumpets has started, which is what happens on this very special day. Now these are scriptural commandments and I'll, I'm going to read to you the scriptures. The special feasts of the Lord or holy convocations or the Jewish feasts or festivals are mostly found in Leviticus chapter 23. And in verse 23 of chapter 23, we read, And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly, commemorated with trumpet blasts. Do no regular work, but present an offering made to the Lord by fire. So the work of the priests went on, even though it was a day of rest for the rest of the community. Now, in Numbers 29, verse 1, it also reinforces this commandment from Moses and from the Lord. On the first day of the seventh month, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. It is a day for you to sound the trumpets. So the more trumpets, the better. They could be silver trumpets, they could be ram horn trumpets, or they can be, uh, like mine, um, something much more elaborate, uh, as long as it's from a kosher animal. Uh, silver trumpets were blasted in the temple in the first century. Um, now, the Jewish New Year has many names. We've mentioned Rosh Hashanah, which is the head of the year. We've mentioned Feast of Trumpets. Another name is Yom Teruah. Yom is a day and Teruah is a trumpet sound. So that's the main observance, apart from abstaining from work, is to sound many trumpets. It's also called Yom HaZikaron, Day of Memorial, when God and Israel remember each other. It's also in tradition, the day that Adam was created. So the beginning again, of, of ahead or beginning. Is it a biblical feast? Yes. Is it in Leviticus, one of the Levitical feasts? Yes, we've just read the scriptures that tells us that. The trumpet or shofar has many uses, had many uses in Israel and became a symbol of the voice of the Almighty sounded on the solemn occasions. It was a call to repentance, yet also a joyful call, a call to battle, a, a, a sounding of an alarm at the approach of an enemy, 
a summons to assemble together. It welcomed in the new moon, and when the temple stood, its call marked the beginning and end of the Sabbath or other holidays. Every 50th year is a year of jubilee, and the, that is also to be uh, accompanied by the sound of many trumpets, as in Leviticus 25, verse 9. Now, in the Israel Museum, there's a, a stone, a half-broken stone, and it's inscribed in very nice Hebrew lettering to the place of trumpeting. And this, when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans, fell down from the parapet, the highest point of the temple, onto the ground below where it lay for almost 2,000 years. So we know exactly where the priest would have stood to sound the trumpet at the beginning and the end of the Sabbath day. So Happy New Year to you all. Thanks for watching. And if you liked that video, please press the like button. It really does help our channel. Also, please press the subscribe button because then you get to be kept up to date with all of the new content that comes up onto Dr. Campbell's YouTube channel. Secondly, if you would like more of this kind of content, Dr. Campbell has a bunch of these sorts of books. That is, so looking at this book, this is Synagogue's Her Synagogue's Heritage, looking at t uh, the Tabernacle, Temple, Synagogue, and all the way leading into the church and also Ecclesia, The Long Journey to Tomorrow. Uh, these are books looking at church history. There's also other books, uh, smaller books that are things like Ancient Ephesus and Early Christianity. Uh, she has a bunch of these books that you can find. So let me encourage you to go over and check out some of her books as well. But thanks for watching the video.